I got a cute little project for you today. I just love this little dude. Simple little bag made with a six by six designer series paper, making for all occasions, every season, but trick or treat seasons upon us. Well, come in quick anyways. And this one is perfect for those little fun size, like trick or treat candies. Awesome. All right. So let's see here. Um, I do have one more bit of housekeeping. I wanted to give you a sneak peek of the Camp Wanna Stamp projects. Camp Wanna Stamp is in registration now through the 18th while supplies last. Um, for the kits, the online class is also available if you don't need the kits. But let me show you the badges um, or the projects for each badge really quick so you can get an idea of what it is. So Camp Wanna Stamp is my annual summer camp. Uh, I do it every year. You do a project and a coordinated card. This is campfire cooking. And then once you've done with the s'mores, the marshmallow pie, like s'mores inside, once you've done the projects, then included in your kit is the merit badge for those projects. So this is campfire cooking. All right. Your kit includes everything except the marshmallow pie because that'll melt in the mail. Um, then this is our 2D fruity badge. It's a card with the coordinating pen treat. Oh, I pulled off the wrong side. Hold on. That's a coordinating pen treat. So there's our little, our little pen. That's the 2D Fruity badge. And you do, you get a literal badge. It's a little one inch pin. I have collectors. People have done Camp Wanna Stamp with me for years and years and years. The badges are a whole lot of fun. And this is the barista badge with the fun little easel card. And the pen and our little cup carrier with the cup lip balm those are the lip balms are included and you get everything that you need to make this if you buy the kit or you can take it just online uh, my favorite i gotta save that one for last because we've never done halloween and camp want to stamp before but we can this year because of how early the catalog came out this is our scorekeeper badge and of course in our scorekeeper badge product project we have a little chessman Pepperidge Farm. That is when the badges get here. I'll give you a sneak peek of the badges too. I'm waiting for them. They've been shipped, but they're not here yet. And then our ghost stories badge. So five badges, 10 projects. You can take it with the kit or online only with the kit includes the designer series papers, a full package of assorted ones, but the equivalent of a full package. It includes the full package of linen thread. It includes the treats. It includes the badges. And it includes a full package of the vellum doilies and a full package of the foam adhesive sheets that I'm so in love with for doing die cutting. So that's Camp Wanna Stamp. Kits are about half spoken for already. So if you want a kit, um, register early. All right, so let's get to the task at hand, shall we? Look at this little dude. We're gonna make this guy. This guy will hold a couple of those fun size candy bars. We're gonna take our six by six designer series paper, any one of your choice, and we are going to score it. Um, we're gonna score at one and a half and four and a half. Now it's really important here that you have, if you've got a directional paper, you've got it the direction that you want it to go on the bag when you get started. And you're going to rotate 90 degrees to the right. And then you're going to score out two and a quarter and three and three quarters. So two and a quarter, three and three quarters. Super simple. You'll be making these all the time. They go together so fast. All right. I need a bone folder. We're going to work our creases. All right. So we've worked all of our scores. Now let's trim it. I need some scissors. And we're going to trim... Let's go back to our front side. Now this, remember we started, this is the front of our bag. And we wanna trim in from the sides till we hit the intersecting score. And what I do when I trim is I just cut the smallest little dart out of here. Then you don't have to remember which side to angle or you just take a little bit out and debulk the score line. So I'll cut the actual score out really skinny we'll do that on both sides all right there is our base i'm going to use my stamp and seal plus this will work great for your bags too all right so on the out facing the um 
the front side of your bag, you can take some strong adhesive and add it to the center tabs, these little inside guys. I like to do an equal sign and I like to go across the top, especially so that when you're putting something into the bag, you don't catch those tabs, all right? And then this is the front of our bag. So we're going to flip and put some adhesive on the inside of those tabs. Be careful, if I had tear and tape here, I wouldn't be worried about gluing it to the table, but since I'm using the um, stamp and seal. So I've got my adhesive on my tabs. Let's bring the inside tab and then fold the back to the front and just square up the bottom. And then same thing on the other side, bring the back to the front. Always bring the back to the front first because then when you bring the front to the back, you've put your seams at the back of the, the bag, which is really nice. All right, so the back of our bag has our seams. Let's pinch in from the sides and just give a little gusset. All right, there's the base of our bag. Just a little cutie. Set that aside for a minute. All right, so that's our everyday um, label punch. I just cut two from Mango Melody. And those are going to um, put our bag, like be our handles. So let's adhere those, but you only want adhesive and go with a strong or a liquid adhesive here on about the bottom two thirds of the label. So I've got my um, stamp and seal, nice strong, and I go a little off the center. If that bothers you, then put it centered. I like the asymmetric balance that it brings. And we're gonna go about, what is that? Maybe a half an inch, three eighths of an inch from the top of the bag, burnish that down. And we're gonna do our coordinating handle in the back. So turn to the back, line up from the top, and then burnish onto your bag. All right, now I've got some more scraps here off in the corner. Let me show you what I've got. Got Magenta Madness. I cannot believe that Stampin' Up! didn't bring some Magenta Madness um, into both the Christmas and Halloween papers. It's such a fun color, especially with Granny Apple Green. This is the new black glitter paper. It's black all the way through, which I love, and has kind of a coarse silver and black sparkle, but very good for holding on to it. So if you like that idea of glitter, but you don't like the mess, this does not even shed. Love it. And then a scrap of Whisper White. Let's do, what do we want to do first? Let's do some quick die cutting because guess what I have. There is. Our label and then our black glitter paper caught like butter one more label Aren't those pretty colors okay let's set that aside we're going to cut out well, our stamped image too but we'll be right back for you let's do a little stamping got my stamp and pierce mat because tags 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 this is the sister set to celebration of tags is a photopolymer stamp set. So we are going to use a stamp and pierce mat and then cover to protect because the fun part about tags, tags, tags is there's three images on one stamp. So if you wanted to, you could ink these guys all up and cut all three images at one time using the coordinated trio of tags die. So it's just a really cool design. And then the celebration of tags, 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 both coordinate with the trio, but the trio of tags, of course, could just be cut white cardstock blanks, and you'll have a bunch of great tags that you can use for any project. All right, I need a black ink pad. And of course, I got this little stamp and spot. So this one is the archival black. It was, if you got it in the um, Sarah's kit, the paper pumpkin, and you get the blackest black image from this ink pad. I am in love with it. So look out for the basic black when it comes in your paper pumpkin kits or if you've gotten those paper pumpkin kits because this guy's going to be your best friend for really strong black images. I'm just going to ink up my 
it's all about the candy. That's the only one we're gonna use this time, so I'm just gonna ink that one up. You don't have to use them all at once, it's okay. You can use just the images you want to. It's nice that you can do the three, but you don't have to do the three. All right, it's all about the candy. Wait till you see how black this is. I missed the Stampin' Up! archival pad. I had one uh, before it retired, but it got cracked. I don't know what happened. It looked like somebody stepped on it, so I threw it away recently. So I'm happy to have my little ink spots from Paper Pumpkin. Isn't that great? Look how dark that is. And I'll show you in contrast. Let me show you because I did the sample with Memento. So I hope that the camera is picking it up right for you, but you can see the Memento tends to gray out on Whisper White cardstock and the archival does not. So hold on to those little spots. They're really, they're really pretty valuable. All right, got my banners here and my glitter paper. My, it's all about the candy. We're gonna die cut that guy. Got my little trio of tags here. And you want to line this guy up so that the corners of the die, the edges, are all, you, all you see is black touching the inside edge of the die. And then put a little washi tape, keep it in place. And grab my machine one more time. Cut this dude. Ethel asked if the new Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine is easier to crank or lighter. Um, I would say that it's a little bit lighter. I noticed right off the bat, it's still not, it's still a heavy machine. The um, mechanism uses the weight and pressure of those rollers to make the cut. So it's definitely, it's not lightweight, but it is a little bit lighter, I think, than my than my big shot. I wonder if there's specs with the, exactly the weight. Um, but look at that, there's my, it's all about the candy. Um, easier to crank. Um, I'd say it's, again, about the same. It's nice to have a brand new machine. My machine was um, very loved. That's how, what we'll call, that's what we'll call that, very loved. So um, it's smooth, it's very smooth. It takes about as many cranks to get all the way across the cutting plate. All right, let me make sure that we're gonna add our label to the front of the box. And we're just centering this guy right on the Mango Melody. And then my All About the Candy. Now I have found that when the banners are exactly the same length, they don't overlap crisscrosses nicely. So see, this is how we're due for the treat. And this is the layers crisscrossed if they're the same length. So this is the kind of stuff that that's kind of fun about taking the classes. Little trick here, make your banners a little bit more exciting when they're crisscrossed. Just trim right from the center a little bit. It's a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, a little bit more than an eighth. So probably about three sixteenths. Add some adhesive, and then when you crisscross your banners, they're gonna have slightly different length, which means they'll layer up more aesthetically. That's what we'll say, they layer up more aesthetically. And so nobody will ever know that you changed the length of them because then you're gonna add more strong adhesive and pop it right behind your tag. So it's our little secret, how you got those two cutouts to look so good. <laughs> All right, so let's get this guy in here. Gotta get my ribbon. There's the glitter. And look at this fun one. Should we try the new uh, metallic mesh ribbon? I think we're gonna try that one this time. So this is new in the um, holiday catalog, Halloween Sweets. This one's from the annual catalog, the glitter ribbon. Both are really cool choices. Turn this guy over, and we're gonna use some dimensionals. I'm gonna go with the black dimensionals. And I think I want the regular size. I like that the combo pack offers both in one pack, the full size and the minis. And I'm gonna be generous because we're sticking this um, 
label to the glitter paper. So the more, the merrier when you're adhering to glitter paper, I think. Here's our little, it's all about the candy. Now it's starting to look like Halloween in here. Trick or treat night. A little bit higher, maybe. All right, next up, my handy D&D one eighth inch circle hole punch. We're gonna hold the whole thing and punch right through the center of that it's all about the candy label and thread through. All right, so put your little fun size candy bars in there and let's tie it up. You guys will have to tell me if you think that ribbon is just too big for the treat box. It's so fine, this mesh, but it is still pretty large and in charge. It has a, a long, a, a, a large presence. What do you think? <laughs> Let me get some ribbon scissors and cut that off. Oh, I think I like it. I was thinking that it might have been too much, but now with all the excess cut away, not bad. All right, so there's with our mesh, with our glitter ribbon. Never seen a ribbon like that with the glitter in the weave. Have you guys ever seen that before? I had to buy a spool of that just because it's so unique. All right, it's all about the candy. For projects like this and more, check out the Celebration of Tags online class, mega online class, kitchen table stamper store. If you've got any questions about the project or kitchen table stamper classes, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. To get your Stampin' Up! supplies, buzz over to marissaelvarez.stampinup.net. You can shop there 24-7. Reach out if there's anything I can do for you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye, guys.